I've been to Birria Via Lobos one time. Got the classic queso dorado taco. When it's dripping, you know it's ready to eat. Oh. Combination of the beef and the hot salsa with the crunch of the tortilla, addicting. Lime. This is still some of the best video you can find in the valley. I'm changing my score from an 8.4 to an 8.9. If you're in the valley, check them out. Mm. Try Outback Steakhouse. Yeah! First up, one of the most iconic appetizers of all time, the Bloomin' Onion. You're supposed to dip it in the Bloomin' Sauce. Creamy daddy. It's surprisingly pretty good. This tastes like a peppery onion ring. I don't know if I like the sauce. I think it has horseradish in it. It's a little overpowering. Not bad though. I got a ribeye and shrimp with two sides. Or did it medium rare? A few moments later. This is ass. Super chewy and has no flavor. Okay, not even gonna attempt another bite. Try this coconut shrimp. Sauce would be good if there wasn't a gallon of sugar in it, but the shrimp's all right. Steakhouse mac and cheese. Solid amount of flavor and solid amount of cheese. Lastly, the baked potato, which everyone doesn't shut the fuck up about. Oh, wow. That baked potato will make you cream. 6.3 out of 10. Just nothing I would ever go out of the way to go get. Trying Japanese Kit Kat flavors. Whoa. First, the matcha. Mmm. This actually tastes like matcha. That is really good. I think this is a wheat cookie flavor. Don't know what flavor this is. This tastes like nothing. Like, it just tastes like air. Next up, strawberry. It really smells like strawberry. That's what it looks like. This kind of tastes like strawberry bubble gum. Not bad, not the best. And lastly, cookies and cream. She's pretty. It kind of just tastes like cream. Daddy, chill. It's pretty good. Macho is definitely the best flavor. If an ordinary Kit Kat is a 6 out of 10, these are an 8 out of 10. Trying a Mexican dish I've never had before. This is what's called an alambre. The guy behind the counter said they're very similar to fajitas. Meat, onions, bell peppers, and it's all topped with cheese. I got mine with al pastor and carne asada. Mmm. It's got some salsa in there. Daddy, chill. The meats are great. The cheese is beautifully melted. A few moments later. 8.4 out of 10. Licked that clean. First time trying Argentinian choripan. It's an Argentinian sausage topped with chimichurri in a sandwich. My, oh my, that's good. Surprise. I would gobble up an Argentinian sausage any day of the week. It's grilled really well. You could tell the fire was kissing the sausage the whole time. And it's topped with that chimichurri. My dad would love this. I'm not sure the lettuce and tomato work. I think just the bread and the sausage would be a lot better. Mm. I would eat this again tomorrow. I licked it completely clean. Without a doubt would wait 45 minutes in line for this. 9.2 out of 10. I just drove across the city to try two fish sandwiches. It's fast food fish, bro. How good could it be? I actually have very high hopes. Original first. My God, tons of sauce, pickles. One bite deep. This is the best fast food fish sandwich you can get. Mmm. They're using flounder, which is a very mild white fish. They're not overwhelmed with fish flavor. The tartar sauce, fire, and it's super crispy. And now for the spicy. It looks like the same thing, but sadder. Much sadder. Bro. This is also good, but the sauce is different. I'd rather get the original and just pour a little bit of hot sauce on it. That is an elite bite right there. Oh my god. Popeyes, without a doubt, has the best fast food fish sandwich. I'd give the spicy version a 7.1, and with one of my highest fast food ratings, I'd give the original a 7.7. .7. Mm. Trying Chipotle's new pollo asadero chicken. Bowl with a tortilla on the bottom, because I'm a professional. Let's try the chicken alone first. Wow, it's actually really good. It's a little smokier than I thought it would be. Chicken's actually a little spicy, too. It's kind of nice. Got a bite with everything. Works really well in the bowl. I also saw the salad dressing hack and I really want to try it. You get sour cream and pour it in their salad dressing. The little cream. Oh. Then put the cap back on. And that's what it looks like. If anybody knows who invented this hack, tag them in the comments. Oh, wow. Yo. It's up there for Chipotle's best meat. Pause. Overall, I'd give this like a 7.4. It's pretty good. Mm. Stomp it in there. Let's give this a shot. I'm not gonna lie, this smells really good. 
This is what it looks like. Now we stick it in the fridge and wait a day. Two days later, I kind of forgot they were in my fridge. So look at the pickle juice. It's so ranchy. I don't taste a ton of the ranch seasoning. Oh, the ranch hits you when you swallow it. That's bomb. The snack queen knows her shit. This is really good. Finally trying the COVID birthed breakfast sandwich, Calabama. The operation to get this sandwich is a girl on her balcony dropping a bucket down like four stories. And then you take a little baggie out of the bucket and in the baggie is this sandwich with this little thing of sauce. Looks like bacon, avocado, egg, cheese, and maybe some caramelized onions. The amount of butter on this bread has me bricked up. Wait, what? The egg is perfectly cooked. The bacon is super crispy. Try some of the sauce. It smells kind of spicy. Little twirl. Look at that bite. Oh yeah, Johnny. Licked it clean. That was one of the best, if not the best breakfast sandwich I have ever had. I'm giving that a 9.3 out of 10. My only issue with it is that it's a little small and it's so good. I just want more of it. DM Calabama if you want a sandwich. According to you guys, I did this wrong last time. So fries and mayo. And this comes from a German spot. Real German fries, European mayo. Wow, that is very good. Oh my god. Fun fact, mayonnaise is actually one of the first things I made in culinary school. When you have a fresh mayo, you can literally eat it by the spoon. I would say this is actually better than ketchup. Supposed to dip it in this. Oh shit, that looks good. Oh brother, that's good. Guacamole, chicharron, a little bit of salsa roja. Oh. Salty and crispy, acidic, beautiful combo. I would give this an 8.7 out of 10, it's outstanding. First time trying Polish food, I think I found a very good restaurant. It's called Polka Polish. First, we got a stuffed cabbage roll. Wow. The tomato sauce on top just coats your tongue and cuts through the richness of the roll. Cabbage is nice and tender. This is fantastic. Next up, we have kielbasa or Polish sausage. Some mustard. Oh my God, that's so good. Some horseradish. Oh, the snap. Just listen to this. And lastly, we got some pierogies. First one's potato and cheese. This is kind of bland. Ground beef. The outside of the pierogi is like mashed potatoes. And lastly, we have sauerkraut and mushroom. Mmm. I really didn't think I was going to like that. This is fire. Polish food does not get nearly as much credit as it deserves. I would give Polka Polish a 9.3 out of 10. This was really good. We have Crab Rangoons. I had meetings all day and found myself where all of you guys suggested to go try these. Emperor Express. It's a different shape. A little Chinese hot mustard, a little sweet and sour. It's crazy how often I used to see these on menus and not get them. Until TikTok and mainly Gabby's Sloth Girl 420. This part of it could be a little crispier. And the filling could have a little bit more flavor. But it's really good. Literal perfect bite. Oh, the hot mustard. Has anyone else had a hit of hot mustard and it goes to like the back of your head? Because that shit's wild. Definitely the best ones that I've had so far. I still think there are better versions than this though. I'd say Green Apple China Bistro and Emperor Express are the two best. Mm. Giving five guys one last shot. Last time, apparently I went to a shitty location. I went to another location. I got a double bacon cheeseburger, which everyone told me to get. That looks fire. I also got some jalapeno in there. The bun at this location, significant improvement. The patties still aren't seasoned that well, but this is better. Mm. Still some of the best fast food French fries you can get. These are so good. Before today, I thought this wouldn't really make much of a difference on the East Coast. As far as Five Guys goes on the West Side, nowhere even close to In-N-Out. But I'm very interested to see what this is like on the East Coast now. Raising my score to a 7.4 out of 10. Mm. The first time I had Jersey Mike's, I thought it was I until my friend taught me how to eat it this way. What I'm about to do may be very weird to a lot of you. You got buffalo sauce. Yes, buffalo sauce. One line of that. Then chipotle mayo. One line of that. 
the number nine, AKA the Club Supreme, and you slide the sandwich through the two sauces. Like that. Then you take a bite. Mm. That is so good. This takes this sandwich from like a six to an eight. Kind of makes like a buffalo aioli. And out of my little mixture, chipotle mayo, buffalo sauce. Sandwich, sauces, oh. Oh my God. The Club Supreme has a roast beef, turkey, and bacon. I get it Mike's way with jalapenos. Chipotle mayo adds a level of richness. And that buffalo sauce just <laughs> hits you with that spice. Eating your Jersey Mike's like this changes the game. These are $30 tacos, 30 bucks. They're ribeye tacos from a spot in Beverly Hills. Looks like some caramelized onions and peppers come with it too. By the way, this is 10 bucks a taco. Heinous crime. This is literally all salt. I'm starving and these are still not very good. Ask for some of their spiciest salsa much much better does not even come close to what you can get at a taco stand this is like a 5.8 it's whatever and while i'm at porto's i got a cheese and spicy pepper croquette the cheese is just silky there isn't too much potato you got that punch from the hot peppers and i got a potato and meat croquette looks pretty good These are also incredible. Both croquettes, 9.2 out of 10. I would come back for those tomorrow. An honest review of the Chick-fil-A French fry concoction. That's what I'm calling it. Some waffle fries, chicken nuggets, Chick-fil-A mac and cheese, which smacks. And we got the cheesy top. Buffalo sauce, another buffalo sauce, one ranch, and two Chick-fil-A sauces. Damn, this looks good. Everything in one bite. Mm. Hot take, Chick-fil-A's chicken nuggets suck. This has to be one of the unhealthiest things you could possibly put in your body, but it's really good. The vinegar and the buffalo sauce is what makes this addicting. I would give this concoction a 7.9 out of 10. Mm. Taco Bell came out with chicken wings. Let's get a close-up, shall we? Dip it in the spicy ranch. Let's try it with nothing. They're definitely a lot crispier than I thought they would be. They're also perfectly cooked. As far as flavor goes, they don't have that much seasoning or flavor. Try the spicy ranch one more time. I honestly don't love the spicy ranch. Altogether, texturally, great. Flavor-wise, a little mid. With that said, glad I tried it once, but I'm probably never getting this again. 6.6 .6 out of 10. Is Mastro's overrated? Coming at you with an honest review of the Beverly Hills staple, starting off with the best dish on the menu, the sauteed shrimp. It comes with a butter parmesan garlic sauce. Legitimately will make you cream, especially when you dip the bread in the sauce. Then you got yourself a jumbo shrimp cocktail. The amount of horseradish in the cocktail sauce is what makes it. Then you got yourself some jalapeno mac and cheese. Get jalapeno in there. Plate still sizzling hot, so it's percolating with joy. The lobster mashed potatoes you could skip because you can't really taste any of the lobster in there. And the bone-in filet is what everybody comes here for. Cooked to perfection. However, not mind-blowing. The butter cake, though, is still good. Not as good as before. So, is Mastro's overrated? 7.6 out of 10. But the vibes are immaculate. First time trying Indian chicken korma. But first, I got a samosa. A mm, little bit of tamarind. And some absolutely beautiful garlic naan. Look at the undercarriage. Just want some of the stew first. Look at how gorgeous that looks. Wow. It's a lot more peppery than chicken tikka masala. And I'd say a little nuttier. This is very good. And now for some chicken. <sighs> they cook the chicken perfectly. And this place makes some pretty epic cheese naan. A little cheese naan with some chicken. That is so fire. I feel like it has a lot less cream, a little bit more of a richer flavor. I would absolutely get this over butter chicken or chicken tikka masala, depending on my mood. And I'm gonna dip the samosa in this just because I feel like it'd be really good. Yeah, that's fantastic. If you haven't tried chicken korma before, highly recommend. I'll give it an 8.8 .8 out of 10. Mmm. Natalie Thai food has the best Thai food in Beverly Hills. Today I'm trying their Pat's Yu, which I haven't tried yet. Wow. Usually the chicken in a pat is kind of dry. In this one, the chicken's tender, juicy. And one of my favorite condiments, chilies and fish sauce. Oh, yeah. Ooh, it gave me a little chili paste. Oh, yes, daddy. I'm going to regret the shit out of this in 30 minutes when I have to go work out. Let's look at this warm bowl of noodles. Dude.
This is the best pad CU I've had in LA. I would give this a 9.4 out of 10. It's amazing. Mm. The Carl's Jr. chicken and waffle sandwich. Looks like there's a good amount of honey on this, fried chicken, and a waffle. The chicken's not crispy. The waffle is dry as shit. If your sink is ever clogged, just throw this in there. It'll probably dry right up. I feel like I have cotton mouth. The honey's a nice touch in there, but every other part of the sandwich sucks. Maybe some Cholula will save it. Better, but still terrible. 3.2 out of 10. And the only reason I'm giving it the 3.2 is because the honey in this was actually pretty good. The day has come. Petal 110 tacos. This thing is literally the size of my hand. It looks like a tortilla with crispy cheese on the bottom. Carne asada, chipotle, crema looking thing, beans, cilantro, and onion. Some grilled jalapeno. Woo! That's hot. Tortilla's kind of thick. It's like a cross between roti and a tortilla. No. No. A historic day. I have smelled some horchata in a bottle. Oh, yeah, daddy. Giving this a 9.2 out of 10. This is outstanding. All of you have been telling me to try the new Pizza Hut melts. Looks like a pizza with folded over dough and what looks like a gallon of garlic and Parmesan. No sauce first. Right off the bat, the dough feels a little stale. Let's get some Murnura in there. Pretty sure this is just extra pizza sauce. Mm -hmm. Try it with some ranch. Now that looks good. Definitely best with the ranch. The idea is decent. The dough just really killed it for me. 6.3 out of 10. It's okay. These are three of the most popular things at Din Tai Fung. Let's see which ones are the best. First up, we have the pork soup dumplings. Little dab of chili oil. I've had a lot of soup dumplings and these are still, in my opinion, the best. The actual soup inside of it is delicious. The dough around it is nice and thin and I love the way it explodes in my mouth. Next is surprisingly the shrimp fried rice. I had this once and didn't think it was that good. Some chili oil. The shrimp are pretty small. I mean, average. Oh, what a bite. It's not bad, it's just very plain, but it is a good simple dish. Mm. And lastly, the chili toss wonton. They give you a separate container for the sauce when you get it to go. This is what it looks like right over the top. Oh my God, just look at that. That is insanely good. In my opinion, for sure the best dish here. I'd give this a 9.3, soup dumplings a 9.1, and the shrimp fried rice a 7.6. Mm. I've had Wingstop one time. Don't remember it being mind blowing, but let's give it another shot. The lemon pepper. That was a lot better than I remember. Seasoned very heavily. It's a thumbs up. Now let's try the Louisiana. There's a ton of spices on this, and it's not bad. It's not my favorite flavor. A lot of people seem to like Wingstop's fries. Dip some in some ranch. No crisp whatsoever. Their ranch is very fucking good. Honey mustard's fire too. Oh my God. The true test of a good chicken wing. Dip it in some ranch. Don't love the sauce. Love the chicken, though. Can you just be crispy, please? Fuck. Key takeaways. The lemon pepper, gas. The original in the Louisiana, decent. The fries, very disappointing. Their ranch, bussin'. I would probably give Wingstop 7.6 out of 10. It's good, but there's better. People regard this as the best burger in LA. The Hickory Burger from Apple Pan. The sauce tastes like hickory wood and ketchup had a baby. Meat quality is actually pretty good too. Let's try some fries. Fries still suck. There is no salt on this, but the burger is great. 8.1 out of 10, probably a top 10 burger in LA. Mm. Trying Cup Noodles new breakfast ramen. This is a maple syrup pancake sausage and egg flavor. This literally smells like maple syrup. The breakfast flavor in this isn't too overpowering. It's actually pretty subtle. Noodles are soft, but have a little bit of a chew to them. Always in a rush to leave the house in the morning. So making this in four minutes was very convenient. And no ramen is complete without some chili oil. Even if it is breakfast. This is what it looks like with some chili. <laughs> this was very easy to make. All I had to do was add water and microwave it for four minutes. You could try it now at Walmart stores or walmart.com. I will not stand for the jack-in-the-box slander. This is the best jack-in-the-box order. Some of this might sound kind of weird. Don't get a burger. Get a jack spicy chicken barbecue sauce. Right on top. Mm. Curly fries. 
This brings me back to childhood. Mm. Is this the best chicken sandwich? No. Does it slap? Yes. Then, very weird, an egg roll with sweet and sour. Mm. It has this very interesting flavor to it. It's really good. And lastly, arguably the best part of Jack in the Box, you get their tacos with their taco sauce, not ranch, right on top. Mm. I love these. Ask me what type of meat is in the taco. I have no clue. But it's good! And you chase the taco with a jalapeno popper dipped in ranch, but the guy forgot to give it to me. Best fast food jalapeno popper. I would rate this order at Jack in the Box a 7.8 out of 10. If you come here after hours, I promise you will have yourself a great time. Mm. You guys asked for it? McDonald's in France got pretty much everything they don't have in the US. Dude! They have a sauce called Creamy Deluxe. I got the potatoes with some cream. Oh my god. They also have this curry sauce. Mm. This tastes like Tokyo style curry. This is incredible. This is what they call the croak. This looks like ass. It basically just tastes like butter and cheese. Wasabi filet o fish. Mm. It's like a wasabi mayo. The bun's a little stale. This is so good though. This is called the original. It's basically a burger on ciabatta bread. This shit's heavy. This is what she looks like. Oh. Trying some Persian food I've never had before. I didn't think that was possible. Is a cuckoo potato sandwich. Cuckoo is like a condensed potato cake, but it's savory. I don't know how I feel about it. The little caramelized bits on the potato have this intense flavor. I can't believe I've never had this. It's got some mustard and some sriracha. Oh yes, daddy. Hmm. It's actually really good on its own. If you like turmeric and saffron, you're gonna love this. And you know me, you can't go to Atari without Osh. Dip your sandwich in. Nothing on this planet tastes like home quite like this. Not their best sandwich, but I think it's vegetarian. And for a vegetarian sandwich, this is outstanding. I'd give this like a 7.6. This dude has been telling me to come to Jaybird's Hot Chicken for months. I drove an hour to Long Beach to try this. First up, we have the chicken sandwich. All right, this is pretty good. The chicken's cooked beautifully, really nice and juicy. The slaw is semi-non-existent, which I kind of don't mind. One of the better brioche buns I've ever had. Let's try it with some of their comeback sauce. Look at how creamy, daddy. Mm. Ah! This place automatically just went up a point. Tastes like a slightly sweeter cane sauce. Some fries dipped in sauce. Look at the amount of seasoning on the fries. And last but not least, we have an extremely girthy chicken tender. Daddy, chill. I got this extra hot. I wish I got the sandwich extra hot. This is the perfect spice level. With a new induction in the top five, this takes spot number three. Now it's Howlin' Ray's, Hotville, and Jaybird's. 9.1 out of 10. Come to Long Beach and try this. So apparently I missed some stuff when I went to Arby's. Everyone said to get mozzarella sticks. Mmm. Best fast food mozzarella sticks ever. Curly fries with cheddar. Gotta love some fake cheese. I was told to get a gyro at Arby's. Nope. Absolute garbage. And lastly, the beef and cheddar with Arby's sauce. Dude, seriously? Arby's sauce sucks. And lastly, the bronco berry sauce. This literally just looks like jam. No, 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 no. This is 10 times better with horsey sauce. You guys are tripping. Still not changing my score for fast food. 8.2 out of 10. This is crazy. You guys have sold out D-Town Pizza every single night since i posted and mad bulldog hot chicken essentially had to issue a statement saying they couldn't keep up with demand thank you for showing support to these places that not only need it but also deserve it it's my whole purpose for making this food vlog and it warms my heart to see how many of you guys see what i saw in the food when i went thank you this is a hot cheetos crunch wrap <laughs> i've seen this place fatima's grill all over tiktok this is so stupid, but it's so good. Mm. The hot Cheetos on the inside are still crispy. The beef actually tastes pretty good too. Let's put some salsa on there. I hate that I like this as much as I do. I think they use shredded cheese and cheese Whiz. Very nice addition. I hate the lettuce that they put in here. This would be a drunk or high person's heaven. I can't believe I'm putting this in the sevens, but I would give this a 7.9 out of 10. For what it is, it's very good.
The cilantro grill burrito. It's kind of like Chipotle. You walk in, you let them know what you want. I got a steak burrito, cheese, cilantro, onion, tomato, a little bit of sour cream, and yeah, I got guac. The steak has this unbelievable beefy flavor, charred beautifully. I also got pinto beans, forgot to mention that. I got a side of their spicy salsa and a side of their avocado. Start with some spicy. Salsa's a little too smoky. Plus, it's not that spicy. Got this avocado salsa. Still one of the best burritos you can get in the valley. This is so good. We got a french fry in my chip bag. Fry was fire. I wish I got more of that. Altogether, I'd give the burrito at cilantro an 8.0 out of 10 really good if you're in north hollywood check them out and i've never been to a place that specializes in tamales tamales first one's jalapeno and cheese the masa is so delicate and salsa roja on it i knew this was gonna be good based on the pots that they were cooking them in they're like these giant steamers full of tamales and the guy in the front said the chicken one is really good chicken's a little dry i think the jalapeno and cheese is actually better and i was told by many of you i had to get a dessert tamale i got cinnamon and raisin new fork that tastes like a churro and the deeper you go in the better it gets pause you guys know me i'm not much of a dessert guy it's just insane i'm just imagining if you got some condensed milk over the top all together giving this tamale experience an 8.4 out of 10 try this it's great is the mole chinese food that they pile high actually that good let's find out this weighs at least five pounds i literally just asked the guy what's fresh he's like oh don't worry about it. i'll just give you a little bit of everything huh the guy hooked it up like this and he only charged me 10 bucks i think this is some orange chicken the chicken is drier than your girl i think this is some kung pao chicken yeah, that's terrible. Some spicy eggplant. Mmm. That was fire. My guy hooked it up with an egg roll. Fresh out of a frozen packet, but not bad. Some nudes. Eh. The saddest piece of broccoli you've ever seen. Mmm. Let's get some fried rice with this piece of chicken. Oh. I'm willing to bet that fried rice has been sitting there for at least five hours. Some beef and broccoli. Mmm. Oh, good. There's some hits, but definitely a lot of misses. I would give this like a 5.8 out of 10. I think it's just been sitting here for a while. I would definitely be willing to pay a little bit more for better quality. The Versailles Cuban sandwich. <gasps> you guys told me this is the best Cuban sandwich in LA. Bold. Wow. Both types of pork in here are executed perfectly. There's a good amount of cheese, yet a good amount of acid from the pickle and the mustard. I am very impressed by this. Apparently, the move here is to get mango juice on the side. Oh, correction, frozen mango juice. Altogether, I'm giving this Cuban sandwich an 8.9 out of 10. I know better versions of this exist, but this is one of the best ones that I've had. This is a Nashville hot chicken breakfast burrito. Comes from a place Cluck and Blaze in Glendale. Mmm. Is this stunt food? Maybe, but it's so good. You got the crispiness from the chicken and the tater tots. The egg doesn't play a crazy pivotal role. It's just a thin layer of fluffy egg on the outside. Some house sauce right over the top. Oh yes, daddy. This might go on the top five list. This is really good. I can see why everybody talks about this. Mmm. Mmm, 100% would get this again. I'd put this above Erewhon's breakfast burrito, and I would give this a 9.1 out of 10. Mmm. I've been seeing a lot of people dress up their chicken sandwiches from KFC, and it looks so good, so I'm gonna try it. Crispy chicken sandwich. Some KFC coleslaw. Hot sauce. Let's drop two of those bad boys on there. I don't know if you could see that, but it's the hot sauce mixed with the coleslaw dressing. It's so good. And it does a really good job of cutting through all the fat of the chicken because it's acidic. I would get this again. This is really good. Compared to all the other chicken sandwiches in LA, I'd give this like a 7.2. For a fast food sandwich, I would give this like a 9.3. Mmm. Apparently, Wendy's has the best fish sandwich in the game. Wendy's panko breaded fish sandwich pickles. There's like a whole head of romaine in here. Good amount of sauce. Mm. This is way too much lettuce. Definitely a little fishier. The breading on the fish, crispier than Popeyes and Arby's. It's also the thickest, so it's kind of stuck in my teeth. This is definitely the worst bun of the three. Tartar sauce. Look at that creamy bite. Better than Arby's, not as good as Popeyes. I would give it a 6.8 out of 10. Mm. Takis pizza rolls exist?
If you're ever making anything pizza roll related, use a toaster or an air fryer, which I still don't have. It's missing something. Magnum bottle of ranch. Little tapatio. Boop, 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 boop. The cheese in this is a little weird. I would give this like a four and a half out of 10. I would just rather have Takis or pizza rolls. Too much talent together. Reviewing throwback places, Shakey's Pizza. I'm gonna be honest, this looks like ass. The undercarriage is actually pretty crispy. The pizza sauce is horrible. The texture of the cheese is a little synthetic. The ranch is fire though. They also have these things called mojos, which seem like a cross between a french fry and a chip. Mmm, it's a fire. Little ketchup. It tastes like Jack in the Box curly fries which I love, but almost in chip form. Overall, I'd give Shakey's a 5.5 out of 10. I'll probably never come back here, but I could see why it was hot back in the day. This is a $60 burger. It comes from the iconic Polo Lounge in the Beverly Hills Hotel. Do some pickle, throw in a little bit of onion. All right, and this is what she looks like. Oh. It's a literally dripping juice. I should call her. The meat quality is good. The bun's a little dry, as you can tell. Is this worth 60 bucks? No, but it is good. Some fancy ketchup. Texture of the fries are good, really nicely salted. The ambiance inside is probably why the price tag's so high, but we're just rating the food here, so I would give it a 7.4. If I'm in the mood for a burger, I can easily think of 10 other places that beat this for a fifth of the price. The legendary Mulberry's Pizza Street. Some people regard this as the best New York style pizza in LA. Bold. Pepperoni and an eggplant Parmesan slice. The dough is still outstanding. Their sauce is okay. They don't put too much of it on there anyway. I'm very pro ranch. I had never had their chili oil before. It almost changes the pizza entirely. Definitely get this or you're missing out. Eggplant parm slice. Dip it in piping hot marinara sauce. Perfect little bite. That's the bite right there. They bread and fry the eggplant, which is what I think makes it. Definitely my favorite slice there. Was Mulberry's the best New York pizza in LA? I think Vito's, Prince Street, and Apollonia's all have a better New York slice. If you have this fresh, I would give this a 7.9 out of 10. Locations all over LA. Check them out. First time trying the Taco Bell Mexican pizza. This looks fairly average. I was so ready to say this is overrated. This smacks. The only thing I'm not crazy about is the actual crispy tortilla. It feels kind of stale. First time also trying Diablo sauce. Ooh, yo, that looks gas. Overrated, fire sauce. Ooh. Yo, fire. This is literally mild sauce with a little heat. What's not to like? All together, give me the Mexican pizza, a 7.2. It's honestly good. Mm.